Hello YouTube, I've had some questions about airlifting a water well and how it works, what it takes to get it done. I've got a couple of examples here that I want to be able to show you. The first is a two pipe system and the second will be a one pipe like you had a casing with perforations on the bottom. The biggest thing to remember when you're airlifting is that you're not forcing the water out of the hole. You're separating the water by creating bubbles in the middle of it. So if you can create bubbles over a greater percentage than what your submergence is, that sorry, than what your total head is, you'll be able to have the water come over the top. Uh, you can demonstrate that with clear tubing and a two-pipe system fairly easily. Add a little bit of air here. Not quite that much. And you can see the bubbles are holding the water separate and stacking it up. Now you don't have any more water in this tube than what you have down here or just run out the bottom. So basically you're trying to create enough separation in the stacks of water to get it to come over the top. One of the biggest factors to how much you can airlift depends on how much submergence you have with your pipes. If you've only got a little bit of your pipe submerged, you're not going to get a whole lot of water out the top. Okay, I'll add a little bit of food coloring here. Make the water a little more visible. Even when I quit blowing air, it's going to stay stacked up for a little bit until the water has a chance to fall back down into the through the pipe. One way to tell whether or not you have enough air going into the system is how consistent the output is. If you're getting a real consistent continuous flow of water coming out, then you know you've got enough air. If it's coming out in surges, then you're not putting enough air into the system and you could pump more by adding more air. So there we're getting a fairly consistent surge. Now, is it possible to add too much air? Yeah, it is. If you get too much air, you won't get much water out at all because your pipe friction you won't get much water out at all because your pipe friction coming up the hole with the air is great enough that it's forcing all the water out the bottom and you're blowing bubbles on the bottom with the amount of back pressure you've created. So it is possible to have too much air uh, and you won't get any water out at that time. I'll show you an example from when we were blowing that we didn't have enough air and then we, when we had the air turned up a little higher, it smoothed out and was producing a lot more. Okay, if we change this over to a one pipe system, we'll consider this to be our casing and our perforations on the bottom. Normally you'd have your casing set down into the water 
and perforations going from somewhere below water level to the bottom of the hole. In this case, you'd be running an airline down the inside of the casing to the bottom of the hole or somewhere in that neck of the woods. Now, if your perforations are up right to the water level, it makes sense that you're not going to get any water to come up the pipe because it's all just going to leave out through the perforations. Your water and air is just going to leave. It makes a little bit less sense, but even if you're underwater here, you've only got 25% submergence here and a whole bunch of water, of room for the water to stack up here. So you're going to be moving water up to here, but then when it gets to this hole, you're not going to have very much additional head left over to push it on up the pipe. So a lot of that water is going to come out your perforations. The water and air both can leave out your perforations up the hole even though you've got your airline all the way to the bottom. <clears throat> One solution to that, if we consider this to be our casing again, is to run a second line all the way to the bottom and you're essentially making a two pipe system just like this one, only you're doing it with one pipe inside of the other. Then your total head available is uh, clear to the bottom of the hole instead of being up where your perforations are. That will make it a lot easier to be able to get flow to the top of the well and not just within the well. Again, the amount of water that's coming out the top and the consistency of it will tell you how much air you need to have going into that well. There's a couple of different things you need to consider. And the first is what your goal is trying to be. If you're just trying to clean out the bottom of the well, you don't necessarily need a large amount of production or flow out of the rest of the well. Mostly you're just trying to get the sand and rust and whatever else is in the bottom to come out. So that would take a lot less air than it would to properly develop the entire section, screen section of the well. If you are trying to develop a well and you just run your airline to the bottom and start blowing, <coughs> you'll notice that there will always be a certain percentage of the sorry. You'll notice that there will always be a certain percentage of the casing above it that has water in it. So as long as you have water above this, the top 10-20% of your screen is not going to have any water coming into the casing because your uphole pressure is higher than what the top of your screen is. So it's not a very effective means of developing the top portion of screen whenever you're just using one pipe in the well. If you switch to a two pipe system, like I covered earlier, then you're producing from the bottom of the well and this top section of screen will have less head on it so the water can come in and it will develop. Uh, it will be able to develop because the water is moving into it instead of out of the well. It's awful hard to develop something when you're pushing water back out into it. You really need to be pulling the water the other way. <coughs> 